the human used the, um, many different types of the biomaterials. And from the lens, blood vessels, heart, and knees. One of the examples that polymer, for example, on your right side, you have transparent PMMA, which is interocular lens uh, biomaterials. And we have a second one is Teflon, and Teflon is the blood vessels, artificial blood vessels. Also the collagen, which is the skin that we, we burn, we, we replace those skin with the collagen. The second category is the metal-based. Some of you might already have the dental implant, which is a titanium uh, grade four. And also hip and knee implants, also titanium. Cardiovascular stents, also the metal alloy, is co cobalt, chromium, and, and so on and so forth. And the last one is the carbon, which is the uh, most abundant chemical species uh, in the earth which is, has very interesting properties, preventing coagulation of the blood, allowing these devices uh, opening and closing for millions of times that use for the heart valve. So these biomaterials are really relatively simple disease treatments. So next revolution is what? So can we use these biomaterials treating cancers? So now what is the problem of the cancers? The cancer metastasis, so different site cancers occur, also um, a recurrence of the cancer happens again and again. Doctors choose the surgery method, uh, chemical method, also radiations, and they'll combine uh, optimally for individual patient. So these are uh, method that has been used very successfully, but there are problems still, as I mentioned before, recurrent cancer, how we can deal with it as, as a next revolution. So, so next, this is the example of pancreas cancer. So doctor will choose which part they cut. So if they cut too much, then actually patient die for the diabetes, not a cancer. Too small, then recurrent cancer occurs right away. So they balance which, which part is cut. So then they actually cut you know, very right side, but still the doctor don't see one or two cells, or even cancer stem cells, they don't see it right after surgery. So that we're thinking the next revolution is the developing biomaterials attached right after the surgery in a tissue in situ, then they release the drug, so they're preventing um, recurrent cancers. There's a concept for next revolution. So this is the movie. We have adhesive, uh, very sticky materials, then go into the human body right after surgery. So it, you will see the movie in that doctors cut the uh, site of the cancer. I hope they, they successful part, but then they stick those biomaterials and release the, uh, the site of the um, uh, cancer. So scientists are learning from the nature all the time in the history that, that this is the IV, then what is the molecule, what is the processes that learn what brings to the sticky materials to the next revolution in the biomaterials. Also in, in our human, 75% of water. So creatures such as mussels and barnacles shown here, living 100% water, so they already developed the method very creatively that, that what molecule process again, responsible for this uh, adhesiveness. So let's think that if we have those adhesive biomaterials in the, in the future, that what applications we might think about it. So this is the example that battlefield, heavy bleeding, everyday car accident, everyday train accident, heavy bleedings, wet conditions. So you have adhesive biomaterials needed attached to it. They make a complexations with the blood. And then those make a film saying very tightly and seal the site of the, of the bleeding so they save the life. So this is the examples in my lab that we have a muscle in the, r the right side, red bar, that has the muscle, first version of the adhesive that preventing uh, heavy bleedings uh, much, much better than the blue bar that is uh, uh, current fibrin glue that every day use in the hospital. So this is a second application, which is coronary artery stent. Still uh, successfully use it, but problem dislocations. We have uh, curvy structures of the uh, blood vessels they don't fit into it, and thrombosis again. So why don't you develop new things for the revolutionary biomaterials such as paint? So that instead of bringing the metals, we have simply bring the paint and spray it, or paint it on site of disease, and they release the drug instead of the metal. So that they use the adhesiveness for treating even uh, uh, the blood vessel uh, diseases for the next generation. So I think, I believe, I hope I convinced you that the biomaterials lead in the next revolution of the, of the economy. Thank you very much for your attention.